Just a second, I need oh, to, sorry, sorry. I, I just, I'm sorry, I can't quite. No, no, it's fair. <laughs> Eric, I don't know if I got it all, so I need to ask because I'm kind of working on a board right now that's kind of interesting. Okay, so I got the SEIU relationship, and what is the relationship between Occupy Home? Oh, that's why I didn't do that. That's why I didn't do um, what is the relationship between Occupy Homes Minnesota, Occupy Minneapolis, and is it affinity group? And there was something else you said, and I didn't get it. Well, it wasn't SEIU. Uh, that's already been covered. Is there, is there it's in the fact. It's, it's somebody put permanent marker. MRG. 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 Movement Resource Group. Kind of like the, the band of Ben and Jerry's and those yep. people. Okay. Yeah. We'll get there. Okay. Chris, you've been waiting patiently. And you've been bearing with me, and thank you, because I know it's hard to leave a discussion. It's okay. I was... Okay. Anyway, um, yeah, my question is, I guess, does Occupy Homes need a mandate or approval from this group, or can Occupy Homes I mean, make its own democratic decisions in this Saturday meeting, which we're planning on doing and having a really big discussion on this? Like, I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out what the point of this discussion is and why it can't happen in the Occupy Homes meeting. Um, and my second question, and I have asked, sorry, is, um, why is, the why, are, why is the facilitator of this discussion a signature of a letter that clearly states a clear opinion on this issue? Okay. Um, when Liz stepped down because she admitted that she had opinions like myself, but then why is this discussion being facilitated by someone who signed a public letter? It's fair. It's a fair question. It's fair. <clears throat> and I should have said something, but I didn't know you were going to ask me to, so I got you. Um, I just have a question about the funding for this, and um, as far as SEIU goes, I know we've covered it already, but um, in the past there have been troops that were funded by SEIU that were opposed by a primary member of Occupy Homes because it was being funded by SEIU. Um, and I'm wondering also if the labor union members of SEIU are aware that their dues are being used towards this, or if SEIU is making an executive decision to help fund Occupy Homes. That's a good question. And is the local or the global union? Yeah. Did we lose Anthony? No, no, he's sitting. Oh, I remember Sarah, thank you. Okay, I did not want to <laughs> I turned to right and I lost the person. That's how to answer their questions. <laughs> I don't have a question, um, but if necessary, I, I've done a fair amount of work with SEIU. I can talk goods and bads. So you can help Anthony on the SEIU stuff. Okay. Uh, like this. I might have touched the SEIU SI, thing too. I've done some immigrant, immigrant rights and immigrant education training with SEIU. Uh, very honestly, I think a group like that that works with immigrants, they need to have a place at the table for us because so many people are being foreclosed are immigrants. But I want to make sure, and I'm sure Anthony can address this, that we don't have, uh, that, that everything's in balance. That it's important that that relationship should be kept in balance. Uh, I don't know what you do about the connection to the mayor's office. But that's probably something that needs to be brought up and discussed. Next. I'd like to know if the SEIU members that are coming to participate in the conference are actually involved deeply in Occupy Homes. Or are they just gratuitous members of SEIU? And I would also, I mean, the genius of the Occupy movement is a commitment to very deep democracy and that very fragile, exciting experiment in democracy. Uh, and I just I admired Occupy Homes and what they get done so well, you know, for so long. But I just wonder if there could be a discussion within Occupy Homes about bringing some more of that excitement about deep democracy and participatory not just in a theoretical way, but it, but it is a way to enliven uh, and grow at this point and mm -hmm. engage your base more. You know, I think there are many, many reasons to do that. Um, and it seems like this is a critical point to do that, uh, think about it. My question is, uh, <clears throat> why, we're, we're trying to grow a movement, why would we close the doors? And the more, um, more people involved in, thing, in events that we make public and we encourage to happen, and we work to have them happen, and we invite people, we should have the whole thing wide open. And people meet 
without everyone around all the time, but it's not, you know, you don't set that on an agenda that this is a closed thing where something important is going to happen. I think they're just setting themselves up. Having more people around than they can handle is a, is a good problem for a young organization and why it's, you know, you, you facilitate panels, you can't have everybody talking at once, you can't give everybody in a football stadium a chance to speak, but you don't. Know, you, you, you keep the doors wide open and invite everyone in. I just want to mention quickly, really, Occupy Midwest is having a convergence in Detroit in less than a month. That's open. I think that uh, everything I've heard is that it's a good example of how to set something like this up. So. Okay. Um, let me, you have a question? I have one more question. You have one more? Okay. It's very brief. All right, I'll get these two and then, okay. Um, has it ever occurred to anybody at Occupy Homesman that there's the perception that the occupiers are being used as foot soldiers to defend the house while people from SEIU are standing aside and contribute, only contributing money and things and that uh, they feel a little bit like they're military people that are now being abandoned, some at least. We need to talk about that. It's very real. Okay, I, I have one as the facilitator, and it's a point of information. Chris is dead on. I made a mistake, and I should have clarified that right at the beginning of this meeting. And for that, I vehemently apologize, because I did sign that letter. Um, so, And I should have said that. Um, but I was trying to pull information out through other people because of that. So I was trying to make the pulling out of information as transparent as possible, but I do apologize because I should have said that. Just like the judge said today to a defendant that if you go there, that prosecutor's my son and you may want me to step aside, and I apologize. So um, I can't change it, but I can take responsibility for it. Um, was there another question? Okay, because I, I want to flip this around and uh, say that it's my watch is evidently, my battery must be dying. I've got t um, 22 to 8, and I, timekeeper, what time, is that watch right? I, yeah, I've got basically quarter to 8. <clears throat> okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 13, 28 questions. My brain can't work two sides yeah. of a board, Anthony, but I have a funny feeling we can combine some of these questions. A, a correction um, or addition that got left off my questions. I was specifically wanting to know when we can expect them to post their financials publicly on their website. No. I did get that. You did say that. Okay. Okay. On the website. So, yeah. if I can. When? I'm going to trip and probably fall. The threads that are coming to give you some information, Anthony, and then I'm going to try to pull um, are transparency, money, SCIU, excuse me, SEIU, um, mayor's office. Security. Yeah, just let him have it. Just let him have and it. And so I'm gonna. I'm trying to give him a little think time. Is what I was trying to do. So first, yeah. Just, I mean, do you want to come over I, here? Uh, you I think. Okay. okay. I think he's fine. All right. I was yeah. just trying to. I appreciate facilitate. it. Facilitate. We you. love you. Okay. <laughs> so, pardon me. <laughs> One thing I wanted to add to some of these questions. Um, D. The, they had. They would like to answer some of these too, as well. Yeah, I have an answer for some of those too. Yeah, I'm not. Okay. I think we should let Anthony. Go I think first. Anthony yeah, yeah, needs I to have the floor, folks. I, I really do. And remember, so, there's a meeting on Saturday to talk about yes. this further. This is not our only chance to talk about okay. this. Okay. So I think Anthony needs a chance. Can I give Anthony a chance to go through the questions? Yes. Okay. Let him so go. time wise. We took almost 15 minutes to put them together, so I, in fairness, I have to give him at least 15 minutes to answer, folks. Okay? Is that temperature check about right? Or more. I would okay. say 30. Okay? Whatever so I said need. at least 15, folks. Okay. I would say this. You better cut me off at a certain point. I could, I could okay. go on for days on each of these, but I'll try to keep it dense. But All right. So who's taking notes to the answers? Because I have no place to write. I've got a flip cam because... 
I can't write anymore. I've already written five pages. Mm -hmm. so I can videotape it. You. You're videotaping. So if that's I can videotape it. Because I'm a person that was at Zakati and I've learned technology fails us all the time. So can someone, oh, can yeah, someone offer to take notes, please? What about that thing? Can we, can we use that? I'll do it. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay, all right. Let's get this on the road. I forgot my phone. Where's your phone? Do you guys said that? Just hold it. All right, so. Oh, I'm going to try to go through the questions, and we're going to go 15 minutes. So, Lucas, kind of give me a check at like 10 minutes, so we'll kind of see how many we got. Okay. And I'll have to do a 10 check on time. All right, the first question was When has there ever been transparency in the Occupy movement? I wonder if I meant Occupy Homes, but I wrote down Occupy. And it, it was your question, Liz. When has there ever been an option other than transparency? Thank no, you. That's a great question. Thank you. See, I'm um, ready. Since Nick's in the room, Nick, would you like to answer some of these questions as well? Or I'm looking to see if there's anything I can add. I'm sure. Yeah. Transparency. transparency. Question. When has there ever been anything other than transparency in the Occupy movement? I'm, I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> to, to be honest, I can, if the question is, is Occupy Homes transparent? Do they think of themselves as transparent? Yeah. Is that kind of, I, I'm not sure what the core of that question is, to be honest. To me, the core, uh, Liz, I'll go to you with your question. <clears throat> I'm just wondering, like, I don't know. That's the question. If you can't answer it, that's okay. It's totally fine. Yeah, I mean, I. Can I suggest a clarifying? Sure. Uh, if I think I hear what's not being said, uh, to me, the question is, uh, it's implied that Occupy is transparent, and I'm yeah. looking at Liz. Yeah. And the question is, if this is an Occupy national convening, Occupy Homes national convening, is it that way? Yeah. All right. So on the transparency. So right. it's looking at the, the word Occupy, the national convening is how I'm taking it. Yeah. Okay. All so right. So I'll answer the, the best I can, which okay. is when this started, it didn't have a name, by the way. It wasn't Occupy Homes. It was like was pretty clearly an offshoot of the Occupy movement, but it was different in a lot of ways. And one of those things was early on, <clears throat> um, we acknowledged that the homeowners were sort of the moral authority in this thing. If we're going to actually make this about homeowners and keeping people in their house, that had to be the moral compass, not ideology, not philosophy, not some esoteric vision of how the world should be, although all of that's important. The center and the core of this from day one, as I've understood it and operated, is the homeowners, their position in the world, and what matters to them. So in, in my mind, it wasn't about, you know, the GA existed. Monique went to the GA and asked for help defending her home. That was very clear. But it was not the case that everything that happened at Monique's ran through the GA in those early days, for better or worse. Some of it was for the worst. Um, but it also meant that um, the homeowner was at the, at the center and the core of that, and that's largely what the culture is based on today. Okay. Uh, your answer was with respect to Occupy Homes. Uh, yeah, how I mean, about if you did that same question with respect to the, to the convening? <clears throat> so, Trent, could you rephrase the question? I think the question is, why is there an issue with transparency with the convening, and why is it being closed off? So, um, the best way I can answer that is, is a committee was formed to help pull together a national meeting, a national convening. And that group set the parameters for what that meeting should look like. For better or worse, and clearly some of it was for the worse. But, um, you know, was transparency the core of that? Um, probably not as much as it should have been. Um, or, or not enough, certainly, to, to, to fit in with the, the Occupy culture that's been created. And I think that's a fact. And we have to accept that. Okay, I think we've got the first question. Second question. And then I, when I do, as I do these, if when I say that, if I, if I haven't got, if we haven't gotten an adequate answer and it's your question, it's okay to tell me that you don't feel it's been answered. The second question is, when can we expect to see total money transparency for Occupy Homes 
Minnesota and public financials, and she uh, modified that by saying IE Web. Yeah, post it on the website. Website. It's a good question. There's a financial committee of which I'm not a part of, sort of the subcommittee. Um, Cats on that, so I'm sure she'd be happy to answer that. I know that the goal is not to like uh, not tell people how much money we have and don't don't have. I know the goal is actually to raise money and generate money and, and make that a transparent same thing. I have not heard a date. I think it's a great question to ask, and I think my sense is it just hasn't been put out there in terms of like a conscious thought. Cat does a million other things, and I think once it's raised to her, they're likely you know it's something that could happen quickly. Although I don't want to answer for Cat. Is it a committee? Is uh is it one person or is there a committee? There's a committee th that I know of. It's Cat and Ben. There's yeah. two people on the committee. If there are more, I don't know. They're looking for a third. Okay. I think they need. Yeah. All right, so the answer on the website is you don't know. Yeah. Is In terms of a date, I, I yes. can't personally commit to a date, but I can certainly, if it's helpful, bring this to Kat and then say this is important to folks and can we get this out there, you know, in the next week. And to me that seems reasonable, but I can't answer for that. Let's let Anthony answer the questions and then we'll get to people if they have questions. told me just minutes ago that it's on the website every Thursday. Can we just let, we let Anthony answer that question? Next so. question. Okay, but what I heard Anthony say is he's going to bring it back to the committee yeah. and he's going to raise the concern. And you were hesitant to commit a date, but. That's right. I, I'm not on that committee. Sorry. Wrong person. Okay. Uh, the third question. The convening operates by an 80% consensus. That was a question. And the closed meeting, so this is a two part. In the closed meeting, what were Nick and Anthony's votes um, on that question of closed meeting? And then who authorized Nick and Anthony to speak on behalf of Occupy Homes? So it's a three part. So the first part, the 80% consensus, um, when did we vote? Is that the question? On it being. It's a, a question. Do you meeting? vote? Do you operate by 80% <clears throat> consensus on your national? You know community? what, to be honest, there was. Different figures that have been floated around. This this really came up in the last week about how we should be. Up until a week or so ago, was um, I think there was essentially total agreement on agenda items, for example. And when there was uh, some contention, we hashed through it without voting on what would be on the agenda. So this idea of putting out a number happened within the last week. I actually couldn't tell you what it was settled on. Why? I, I couldn't tell you if it's eighty percent or sixty percent. Can anyone else? Can Nick? And why do you know that you don't vote? Oh, that's your question. Because Nick, yeah. Nick's been on more calls than anyone. Yeah, Nick, yeah to, to, just to parse out, that's a good question. Yeah. Nick has spent probably twice the amount of time that I have on this, and I'm, I'm thankful for it because somebody had to actually bottom line it, just in terms of capacity and other things. Um, so I the answer is it's 80% consensus is yes, but it's a, it's a recent thing. And the next one was it's a closed meeting. Did you did Nick or Anthony? What was your vote on that closed meeting? Yes or no? I did not vote on that particular issue. So you did Nick and Occupy it? I don't, I don't did remember. Did you stand that. aside? Or? No, I don't remember that particular issue about should there be open or closed portions of it coming to a like a, a formal vote. We haven't had any formal votes. Yet. It's all just been <clears throat> discussion and agreement. So what have you voted on? Just... We've discussed we discussed participants based on the criteria that's on the FAQ there right. of eviction defense, and there was questions about should this person be there or not. Um, and I don't think there was ever there was never raised to a vote, but in general people would say yes, this person is good, mm -hmm. or if there was like a concern, well they've never done eviction defense, and they should be there. And then that was sort of the end of the discussion. I, I had somebody that I initially thought would be appropriate, and the rest of the group kind of said, uh, that doesn't seem right. And it, it never came to a formal vote. I just sort of said, you know, I know them. I think they'd be good, but it didn't seem like they would fit. And I, I stood okay, I, this wasn't my question, but at some point, folks were told it was a closed meeting. There was no vote on that? That was just assumed for... And I, it's your question. So, the question you had was, what was their vote? So, well, 
Spe I don't know if you want to, because then you said who authorized, so. Specifically, I'm asking who authorized Nick and Anthony to consent on that question and any other question, since they did not get the consensus or the approval of the Occupy Homes general membership. So, if you're asking were there specific votes that we brought back to the General Assembly meeting or general meeting, then no, because there were no specific votes. There was input given, but there was, it was made clear to the group that we were on these calls. But you specifically agreed to certain things, such as this is a closed meeting, correct? It was never brought for a vote. That so it's really not a closed meeting? That's, that's so it's not who a closed meeting? Who decided? Who said it's closed? When did it become a closed meeting? When did it become a closed meeting? And it said 25 to 40 people. It's been that okay. Way. That is disingenuous. Yeah. Because it's disingenuous to send emails attacking personally somebody who's about to be charged for riot in the third degree. That's how this conversation started. There's plenty of riot charges around. Charged charged the point is, when were these yeah, decisions no taken? Okay, folks. Calm down. Okay, Please. okay. Don't I need everyone it. to take a breath. And Lucas has already told me that we got a time issue. We're so on yes, we do. So we're on 15 minutes. So and we're only through a few questions here, Anthony. So my question is, Anthony, and I need to do a temperature check. Can you stay with us? To I can, but I'd questions? actually like to address them if other people wanna or not. But yeah. it, it's not gonna be yeah. helpful for me to have like a six. I understand that, and I'm trying to pull it back to you. So, but that question was. A, but I can question. stay a little longer if it's when loser draw answering the question. So my question has not been adequately answered, and I'd like to restate it. Okay. Some point along the line in this convening committee on these conference calls, it was agreed that this would be a closed meeting. The grant does not say it's a closed meeting. The grant says 25 to 40 people. That is an expectation of the participation. Anybody who knows anything about grants knows that if you have 50 people instead of 25 to 40, which which will probably happen anyway, that does not mean that you're gonna, that, that that is a strings attached and that you're gonna lose the grant money. If you have 100 people, the grant, the, the people that issue the grant aren't gonna say, oh, that's, you violated the, the, okay. the, the procedures of the grant. They're gonna say, great, you doubled your expectations. Okay, you're giving your opinion right now, you're not okay. clarifying a question. And so I'm my question, on that. my <laughs> question is, at some point, it was consensed or agreed upon in that convening that this would be a closed meeting. When did that happen? And who gave the two of you to who gave the two of you authorization to agree to that? If you did agree to it. Anthony. So I'll answer it the best I can. At some point amongst that that convening committee, which I don't even think was called a convening committee at that point, it was discussed how many people should be at the meeting. Right? In terms of capacity, in terms of venue, these are questions that have to be answered if we're actually going to do something. So that number was set, not by me. I don't remember, Nick, you answer for yourself, but I don't ever remember saying 20 to 40 people. But there was general consensus about limiting the number of people and not making it like fill up the Excel Center size. Right? That was never on the table to make this as big as, as possible. Nor did I say it should be 1,000 people. I, in fairness, would I have minded it? In some ways, do I prefer it? But I did not at any point vocalize making this as big as possible. What I did hear was consensus from the group on limiting that. At first, it was like 25 people, if I remember right. And that at, at a certain point, that wasn't realistic. And people were adding people and saying, I really think this or that group should come. And then it turned into 40, and people said, we have to really limit this. At some point, this is going to become unmanageable. I think it may be at 41 or 40 now. I don't remember coming to a vote. Um, and I don't remember weighing in and saying, I don't remember weighing in either way, actually. But I didn't, I also didn't block it when it was 40. I didn't say, shame on you, this should be a thousand people. I didn't do that. Can I ask a question? Uh, no, I no. want to keep going through these questions. The answer is no. Um, I'm going to move on for the sake of the other folks in the room. What events are open? Specifically, referring to the convening. Right. So there's a, one of the sheets that's being passed around has the agenda on it. Why don't you, rather than saying that, please answer it, Nick or uh, Anthony, because people haven't seen the agenda. It hasn't been provided. I can to it. Without having, I can tell you nine to eleven on the here it is on Tuesday, August seventh, uh, ten to eleven thirty. What day? Tuesday. Tuesday, the seventh, ten yeah. to eleven thirty. 
that's like a welcoming committee okay. that, that folks agree there should be a time when people get into town. Keep going. Anybody can come. It's at the Knock office, um, 10 to 11.30, and that's open to anybody okay. who wants to come and meet whoever is in town at that point. A lot of the folks will already be in town, and they're coming with the express um, okay. you know, invitation to okay. mix and mingle with folks. Uh, we um, were told 13 hours, so just give us the hours and I'll write down the hours. Uh, 12 to 9 p.m. On, on the 7th, the day of the 7th. Um, 12 to 9 p.m.? No. What's 12 to 9? So that, on the, that night there's, there's uh, a social, social mixer event. So none nine. of the meeting is open on the 7th except for an hour and a half? Nope, that night. Okay. There's a mix and mingle. That's, yeah, that's yeah, not on you. From 9 to midnight, there will be an open socializing event. We're still putting the details together. We're open to that. We're looking for a mix and mingle spot right now because, again, somebody has to bottom line that if folks have an idea on where to have that in terms of an open place. Really? We're That's open to different that. than the block party. <laughs> What's that? That's different than the block party. It is different than the block party. Okay, so, yep, that's, okay, that's so on the, the 7th, thing. we have a 10 to 11 30 and 9 to midnight. What on the 8th? And on the 8th, uh, uh, six to eight. So there's uh, this is at Monique's house. Mm -hmm. This is probably what they're planning in the next room. That's open to anybody to participate in in that plan. Um, but that's a, a garden party at Monique's house where um, she is asked. Monique is asked that folks come and help her plant a garden in her backyard, sort of the seeds of change and transformation in her yard. There'll be some urban gardeners there, and there'll be some music, and it'll be from 6 o'clock until 9-ish. And at 9, um, from 9 till midnight-ish, there'll be another round of sort of house party-ish sort of stuff. And that hasn't been fully determined yet either, but 9 to 12. Um, so basically from 6 to 12, it will be open, and the folks from the gym will be there. Open lines of communication, obviously, ask people whatever you want to ask them. You'll be able to have a drink with them if you want. Ask them whatever you want. They're actually slated to go till 2 a.m. <clears throat> so, I'm going on a midnight. So am I, just, just so I can understand, that the time of the meeting that's open to anyone is one and a half hours, and then there's social events that are open to everyone that are after the meeting. Am I characterizing that correctly? Uh, I don't know about the blocks of time in terms of... Well, what I heard you say was, um, and I'm just trying to capture it in writing, so mm -hmm. Tuesday, 10 to 11.30, meeting time. Tuesday mm -hmm. from 9 to midnight is a mix and mingle. Mm -hmm. And then Wednesday the 8th from 6 to midnight is a mix and mingle. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard. Is that yeah. correct? Okay. That's right. All right. And then Thursday from 9 to 11 is an open housing justice panel. And this, that part's really important, actually. So early on, I think we did a poor job of communicating lots of this, but that part in particular. So that's like an open panel discussion of what's Atlanta doing, for example. It's, it's unclear to me at this point who's going to actually participate or be able to, but, but that was brought up earlier on. So it's, we don't know if it's open. It is open. It's, it's entirely open. What we, what's unclear is who exactly is going to be able to stay who's for that. Is it right to the city? Is it occupied okay. Okay. Atlanta? Okay. Um, but that will be an open discussion where people can ask any question they want, um, you know, okay. completely open. Okay, I'm going to go on to the conference. next person's, oh, is Sorry. that part of the oh, SEIU? So that, oh. that's also a good question. I think that comes up with the SEIU okay. questions and funding. <laughs> that I'm happy to address okay. them, but it is on the morning before their conference starts, and they've offered to host that because we don't have a spot that was big enough. And they said, if you want to, we're going to open our noon. You can come in before that if you want. Okay. So, so the time on that is? Uh, and the time on that is 9 to 11 on Thursday the 9th. Uh, is that there? At there? It's a Wellstone oh, action. It's at the Wellstone Hall. Okay. Yeah. okay. I'm yeah. going to rely on her to get that. Okay, I'm going to keep going through our questions. And this one, I can't tell his name, but he had three. Uh, so I'm going to give this to you once. Uh, you have an offer of a couple rooms. Um, how ideas for other from other cities are going to be communicated to people here? Mm -hmm. How is that going to happen? Mm -hmm. And that's a question. Chance that now. Sure. Um, 
how are ideas communicated? So one of the, a few ways. Uh, one is note. There'll be a note taker taking notes on the entire meeting. Um, we haven't settled on that person just out of just capacity, but um, I think we're open to what that looks like and who that person is that takes those notes. There are also five participants and five or six <laughs> observers. Five. Five participants and six five participants. observers. Six participants and five observers that have been agreed to by this convening committee. So <clears throat> they weren't comfortable with having the room flooded with Minnesota folks, but they were, they acknowledged the fact that it only makes sense that there would be more folks from Minnesota in the room. And so five participants, six, um, six participants and five observers, and those people have not been decided. It shouldn't actually be us for obvious reasons that decide that, that should come out of uh, a committee or maybe on the Saturday general meeting. About, there's lots of ideas about who those people are and how we should do that. I'm open, I don't have any preference whatsoever on how that happens. So a note taker, okay. Note taker and the note participants. Question, I'm asking for clarification, those notes will be public? Uh, yes. Okay, uh, that I've, same person had another question, where, where and when decided to withhold knowledge to the group? And I'll ask a clarifying question, which group you mean? Do you mean Occupy Minneapolis? Do you mean Occupy Homes? I mean the Occupy movement and everybody else that cares about social movements in general. Like, it creates an informational shadow. So, or, I mean, are you saying that, like, all the, like, I think it was alluded to before that, like, there are, like, closed sessions that, like, won't, I mean, I'm very confused. Like, are all the notes going out right away? Like, is that actually what the baseline is of information that's part I mean that's part of the confusion you know like are all the notes going to be posted pretty quickly or not you know <clears throat> so to my knowledge and my understanding and stuff I'm speaking for lots of different groups which in some ways you know, but well, my understanding there, there is going to be a forward. note taker okay. when they're released and under what circumstances I would assume immediately is that six hours later, the same day? I don't have an answer for that. It deserves an answer, but I don't for have an answer for that. Chunker yeah, session, that's... though? And my understanding is for the entire meeting, there will be notes taken on every aspect of the meeting. Anthony, I have a request, and I didn't give this to you earlier. Um, could you take notes of what you need to go back and find information for, which is one was the financial information, sure. and this would be the second one, and the time, time ex expectation of when that would be filed, and you can handle it that way? Sure. Okay. Um, there's a lot of SEIU in here, so uh, the question here is money from MRG and SEIU, are there strings attached and what are they? Yeah, so MRG, I have heard, do, do people kind of loosely know? MRG is, it's an acronym for Movement Resource Group. I won't pretend to know all the details under which, how they were created and so on and so forth, but um, I do know that they are funding in part um, at least Occupy related work. Mm -hmm. I don't know who else they're funding, I couldn't tell you. I know that um, we've gotten a couple of grants from them. Uh, 10 grand is the largest and it was for this convening. And so once the idea of we should all meet up was broached, the second question was how are we gonna do this with the all volunteer, you know, nobody's, nobody's paid, I'm paid through knock, but most of the people doing this work around the country are not paid. Uh, could you clarify, or is anybody from Occupy Homes getting stipends? Uh, separate question, but yeah, yeah. yes. Okay, so people are getting paid. So, let me rephrase that. Okay. Most of the work being done around the country, people are not being paid for. Mm -hmm. So the question was, if we're going to actually do this in more than a theoretical concept, we have to have a way to get people here, and how would we do that? Mm -hmm. And so lots of different options came about. What we actually got was an MRG grant. Okay. MRG said this is a great idea and we will fund it. But in terms of strings attached, I can tell you only for me, I have heard absolutely not one iota of you should do this or that or the other, other than in the grant proposal itself it says we want to report back on what happened. And it's almost, I don't have the exact proposal in front of me, but it's almost that ambiguous. But they want to know something happened, did a convening happen, were there people that showed up? Do you know if anybody okay. besides Ben and Jerry? Okay, stop, 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 stop. Yeah. I need, okay, I, no, 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 I need to say, I need to say no, because I've got to keep going around the sure. room, because it's fine. already 10 after 8. Sure. Um, I have heard of information about energy and the grant that was written. Um, we're going to let Anthony answer, so I'm going to ask you to hold. Okay. okay? 
All right, Anthony, you were silent on SEIU and any strings attached and any money. Yeah, same, same thing. I can tell you with total transparency that I've talked to lots of folks at SEIU for lots of different stuff. They have been extremely supportive and they want to see this work grow. It would be disingenuous if I didn't say that. I think they're not the only ones. There are lots of people who want to see this as well for lots of obvious reasons. They have a member base that's affected by foreclosures and they want to see a social movement happen in a legitimate way on lots of fronts. Immigrants' rights is, is another one that they all mention. Uh, but they want to see this do well and, and um, so I know some of those folks. I talk to some of those folks. I value some of their opinions. I have never heard from any of them, you should do this over that, with one caveat. And if we're going to be transparent, we should do that. Um, and, then, and this goes to the question of the mayor and the relationship with Javier and his partner. And I have gotten lots of pressure at various points um, to hold back from the campaign with the mayor. And it was very clear to me that that was personal in nature. And it was, those things were communicated and then immediately apologies were issued about how they shouldn't have done that. I'll say this though, that A, it had no effect whatsoever on me personally. I'm not speaking for the movement or anything else. I have not been moved one iota from my position with the mayor. I've been at actions at the mayor's office. I've stated publicly, I'd like to see him on the first train smoking out of here tomorrow. Okay. Any money place. from SEIU? That was the question. Any money from SEIU for this convenience? Um, there, has so been a, there has been a recent offer, actually, a very recent offer of some funds to help with the convenience. We have not gotten any money from them up until this point. Um, but they may cut a check to help with the convenience. They're not paying for plane tickets. To be clear about that, there's been lots of that information floating around there flying people in, the MRG funds are being used to fly people in. Um, I feel like there's other SEIU questions that we can get to, I don't know if can ravel too much. Does that kind of answer All right, question? so yeah, so if, I'll, if I were to jump down and go, is the, the question was, is it local, national, international, and is there another conference? I, wouldn't, I couldn't comment on you know, who's technically cutting the check from SEIU. I know the local is who's been supportive. I've had no contact or interaction whatsoever with national folks. Other than, this is a side tangent, but I, if we're going to be transparent, I think it's important. At one point, I was paid through MFB for the work that I'm doing back in October when it started. And MFB paid now, not paid me. Because the work was so contentious and volatile, and SEIU, by the way, was, was funding some of that through MFB. Pay for that. It's pretty transparent. Are you in a position you can say the dollar amount or no? Of that uh, no, it was my, my very not modest you, salary. Not you, the other <laughs> check. Oh, I'm, I'm not. It hasn't even okay. been cut. Right. So right. I don't want to. Um, other questions? It's less than 10 grand. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The other you guys are going to take that? You're going to take, the check? You're gonna take the check from SEIU? Uh, I don't know. It's, been, it's just an offer that's on the table. Okay. Uh, what is, okay, so you've kind of covered the SEIU relationship. Um, but I, I, if I could finish this point, if I could, just because I, I think it's important. That mm -hmm. money was national money, paid to MFE, paid to me. Perfect. At a certain point, this work became so contentious that SEIU National, and it was their attorney, said, that dude doing this work is a problem. Because if somebody throws a rock through a window, the whole works could go down. So get rid of that dude. Although we like the work, that's a problem. That dude was you. That dude was me. Okay. So I think it's really important if we're going to throw around all sorts of theories about who's pulling what strings. Um, and in fairness, they did it in an amicable way um, because they, local, wanted to see the work continue. It was national lawyers who said this, this shit's got to go. But, no, it was before that, actually. All right, there's two more SEIU questions. Um, SEIU works with immigrants, and you want a balanced relationship with the mayor's office. Actually, oh, be careful. That was, I think my question, and I wanted to balance, make sure there's a balanced relationship with all the groups involved in this convening. And I just kind of reiterated Liz's concern about the mayor's office. Okay. So I didn't, I didn't fully understand the question. Is the, um, the, the relationship to the mayor's <laughs> office? Is that well, I just reiterated Liz's concern. I need my concern is about balance between the groups and the uh, convening. Okay. And I think SEIU needs to be a part of it, but how do we make sure that everybody kind of has equal footing? Oh, I see. I see. So, SEIU as an organization is not at our 
convening at all. There's no SEIU member, except for Mark Freeman, who's a homeowner here, uh, Gerardo Caramarcus, uh, uh, will likely speak at some point, both of them will. Alejandra is an SEIU member, and she'll likely speak. There is no formal anybody from SEIU that will be at that convening or will weigh in on any opinion, nor have they asked to be So the member. SEIU people are homeowners? Correct. <clears throat> really quick, so that, I'll add one caveat. Sorry, then. If okay. if there are members, if there are people at the committee who happen to also be SEIU members, I don't know who they are, and they haven't identified that, nor has it been an issue. It's not an S. Their organization is not in any way participating. So, right, thirty-five okay. minutes. Okay, okay, okay. It's, it's I, I important. Want to, it's no. a clarification. I just. I Let me to, before okay. you do that. Can I do a temp check from the people that are still here because we've lost a hundred people? <sighs> How much longer does this group want to keep going? We as are probably about thirty-five minutes. What I have a suggestion. We are probably I have a suggestion. Yeah. Um, if we read off the rest of the um, questions and kind of say which one is more important, like each individual. Yeah, one. more time. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to ask a question. Can I get? Consensus here on how people feel. Temperature check on staying till 8:30. That's about 12 more minutes for to give him a chance to respond to questions. Okay, I've got. You're really helping me. <laughs> He's doing good. Okay. okay. All right. All right, Anthony. Okay, I need Anthony's attention. This is an occupy event, you guys. You just hold it, Elena. Uh, 15 right. minutes, top. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Right up here. 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 Okay, the question to Anthony was. The question to Anthony was that uh, are there people that are uh, having, in some, ex some extent, their you know, fair pay to go to this conference and the other conference that SEIU is involved with? Like, what's the overlap there and what's the money with, with those folks? But good question. So, the folks coming to our mm -hmm. conference are paid, to my knowledge, entirely from our MRG. There are maybe some folks who bought their own ticket, or did some other organization buy them a ticket? I don't know. But to my knowledge, our money is being used to fly people in. Nobody else has said, I'll fly folks into your conference and here's a check for it, including okay. SEIU. Okay. Is there overlap between the first and the second conference? I will say, in, again, in transparency, they had theirs on the books uh, on the 9th and 10th, I believe. Um, and while we were planning ours, we were deciding which days to do it. And it made sense to us to do it in an overlapping way, knowing that some of those people may or may not be in town, and maybe they can stay an extra day or come in early. So there was that discussion. I know that ACE, as an example, in California, will be here for the second portion. They were already coming. And they also, it was agreed that they should be here for hours too. They're doing great work. So let knows this in California. Um, so they'll be here for both parts. Okay. I couldn't tell you who else is going to be here okay. for both. There will be some. Thank Definitely you. not all. Thank you. All right. So this, I'm going to go away from SCIU because I think we've gotten those questions uh, together. That's actually my question. Pardon me? I actually have a question about whether, the, I guess there hasn't been a check from um, SCIU. There hasn't been a what? There hasn't been a check cut yet from the CIA. Correct. I was just wondering if the members were aware that there were funds being allocated potentially for this conference, especially because in the past there have been SCIU funded trips specifically to Washington, D.C., where certain members of Occupy Minnesota um, were put off by them funding the trip to Washington, D.C. and us being co-opted by SCIU. Okay, so what I'm going to do with that, because that feels, you're writing down, you've got two things on your list you're going to check on, add a That's third, a let us know how much money you're getting from SCIU on the conference. I'm going to suggest that as a question, because you don't know right now, and then in the interest of transparency, whatever that figure is. And wants to know if the SCIU people are aware that their money is being spent. Right, right. If, if, if potentially there is a check cut from SCIU to be used for this conference. Do their members know that the money that they're paying for dues every month is going to this right. specific conference as well? So, in I have full transparency with you know the way and they I, do things and the way that they should. I do that. I don't know if he can find that out. I can't. So I I'll, I'll okay. Just say that. Okay. I, no I think that may be an unrealistic expectation. 
I think the dollar figure would be one thing. I think he could take it back and let people know, but I don't know if he could be responsible for obtaining the information, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. 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 Reasonable next, question. I have no idea. okay. Next question has to do with the issue of uh, clarifying the security decision and the fact that, as I understood it, I'm paraphrasing, it was not in the letter, but what we heard tonight was that it was raised. So the person asked that it be put in writing from the convening committee and published if that security really was an issue because it's not in the letter. Is that what I heard? It was Scott. He left. But no. And how that was evaluated was also my question related. So I'll say this. That letter was drafted in response, as Travis mentioned, to the letter saying we're super pissed off about this and we demand like we're going to come. And we brought that back. What's that? That's not what I let. That, that may not be fair to frame it that way. But we didn't know it was open or let me not speculate on how that letter was framed. It was a direct response to the to the letter that Ben and others signed off on. And so it was felt the group immediately said we should respond to this. It's like a legitimate uh, deal. Some of the people even knew Ben in Atlanta in particular and said, you know, he's clearly not a crazy coup, so we should address this. And it was drafted within hours. And so, uh, in the sake of getting this out. Okay. And so, it doesn't surprise me that lots of things were probably left off. It was a bullet point thing that addressed things that we felt were the most important. It does not address every issue that has come up in the last month to six weeks of, of uh, putting this thing together. There's lots of things that probably got left off. Um, and it doesn't surprise me that that's what Okay, well, the question that I have is clarifying the security issue. And I, okay, so I don't feel. Uh, Scott left? Yeah. The question is the answer we heard here was security. So, what I'm hearing you say is your letter was responsive to the first letter. Um, the, the question you have was are you willing to publish that, the security issue piece? I'm willing to take that back. Take it back on your list of things? Sure. Thank you, Anthony. Okay. Um, where did the media and tech questions get answered? And I took that to being the participation of the media and uh, live streaming and or tweeting and or whatever social media might come out of the meeting. Mm -hmm. So one of the million things that was discussed in terms of how many people should be there and who, um, I can tell you specifically that the issue of live streaming came up like 24 hours ago. It should be live streamed or not in the world circumstances. And I actually put that on a separate list of things that I said I'll work on some sort of proposal uh, for something that makes sense in terms of who would do that and under what circumstances after I talk to some people uh, within our larger base that may want to do that and contribute to that and then flesh out a plan and bring it back. So that's an example. Of, uh, it's much more informal, I think, than than probably it should have been, or than, than people are thinking about it. It's just like, here's another thing to consider, how should we deal with it? Okay, the next question was, Occupy presumes transparency and secrecy of Occupy homes. And it's not really a question, it's a... What was that? I couldn't hear you. Occupy presumes transparency and the secrecy of Occupy homes. And I apologize, I'm doing the best I can with writing and trying to capture from a lot of people. Did can the person student? leave? Yes. You can phrase it as a question, is there a secrecy in Occupy homes? I can answer that. No, Anthony needs to answer the questions. I'm sorry, Lucas. Right I'm now. To, I, I'll answer it and then I'm happy to have somebody else weigh in. Um, I, I don't think of, of anything that happens within the Occupy homes as closed or a secret. I do think of things at times in terms of security, um, largely of our homeowners and largely of, you know, doing my best to make sure the movement grows and isn't like, washed by lots of people who want to see people thrown in jail and arrested. And I wouldn't frame that as secrecy and I wouldn't frame that as closed. I think at times it's probably, it may be happening and it's something that I need to address and we need to address, but um, there's no culture of secrecy that I'm aware of. But we don't release, you know, homeowners W-2 statements either. Is that secrecy? I don't know. But I'm, I'm content with that. I'm okay with people not knowing the individual aspects of homeowners and campaigns that insulate the homeowner from perceived harm that they, they perceive as harm or that I think could jeopardize them. And I'm okay with that, with that aspect. Yeah, I know Lucas is going to 
Lucas, you wanted to answer, but I'm going to honor because Liz wanted to answer another question. So if you can hold your answer, Liz has ones for previous. So. Um, <laughs> what are your thoughts? I'm just okay. eating. I'm okay with Luke. I haven't eaten Luke my food sitting over there. Like okay, they, let's just stick with you answering the question. Yeah, I do. I want to stick with that. We have like yeah. seven more minutes.